yeah. like others in history, and even recently where a God intervenes through the angel, uh, making the movement, although it's still that connection is God, obviously, but through the angel, you are given the impetus to make certain actions. Okay. So in other words, God, God acts through, it could be through an angel, or, or it could be through whatever means God, you know, sometimes we'll say the Blessed Mother, or, or, or uh, I'm praying to one of the, I'm play, praying to St. Anthony so that I can find what I lost, okay? You know, so we, we, we ask some human beings to intervene because they can understand more easily. That's one of the reasons sometimes we do it. Now, now this sheet over here, this, uh, what you have here, faith and doctrine, is from the, this is the, this is a book by Gregory Bond. It's one of the oldest books on faith. It's, it was written around the 65, maybe 68, something like that. It's an old book. There's, there are, I've used maybe 30 other books on faith, but I've never found one that was so directly relating to God's presence. It's, you know, now, it's very repetitious. You're going to see that. It, it's very repetitious, but at the same time, he's trying to say, if God is real and God is my Father, what does that mean? How do you translate that? How do I translate that God is Father? You say, all right, well, first of all, at least he's in heaven and he's in my Father. Well, he's not really my Father. Yet God was also participating in my creation. So in other words, human beings who have a soul are also working with the mother and father so that the human being could be complete, body and soul. So God does intervene with us, does intervene in our lives, and then works with our mother, so when we have a soul, so then basically we say, God is my father, but the idea is more that what are the qualities of a father? What kind of a... So what you have over here, we're going to try to see if we can finish that section where it says there's about four pages. There's, there's about four pages that sh show that God is uh, as a father. Now, we're not going to read everything because, you know, we just can't. But there are some ideas there that, are, that, I, that I would consider quite interesting and that could also be very helpful. Okay. Now, Sheila, if you don't want, if you don't mind, why Want don't we erase, erase this? Sure. And then we, we can. Now, if you look at the section now, God is Father. And you you keep the sheet, and then it's yours, so you can write on it. You can scribble it, whatever. If if Sheila puts something at the board, you can put it in the margin if you want. Do whatever you want. It's your sheet. But I, I simply went through this sheet myself a, a number of times, and I have identified some insights that I thought were very useful out of this. Okay, and so since I, it's a fairly long sheet, instead of reading everything, I thought I would identify some places on the sheet that we would read together, so that. We can, you know, so that we don't have time to read everything. But if you take now that at the bottom where it says God is Father, towards the last, last five lines about the author of reality, the, the author of reality is on our side. The ground of being is not far away, hostile or indifferent to us. Okay. Now, the third line from the end. There is no reason to be afraid of the world. There is no reason to fear the unknown tomorrow. For the ultimate root of all being protects and favors human life. Okay? So that's one insight. Now, if I actually believe... Now, 
So in other words, what does that mean? It means that if I actually believe that God is on our side, God is the ground of all being, there is no reason to fear, there is no reason to be afraid personally. Why don't we put that number Personal. one? What? Yeah, Personal. number one. Why don't we say that? There is no reason to be afraid of the world or of tomorrow. Okay? So if I actually believe that God is on my side, why should I be afraid? Say, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And if you tell yourself, if you actually believe it and you tell yourself, God is on my side, then why should I be afraid? You know, if I actually believe it. Now, I'm afraid when I don't believe it. That's what happens. I'm afraid when I don't really believe it. It's in my head, but it's not in my guts. When it gets into my guts, then I really believe it. Okay? So, number one... About more? <laughs> uh, maybe just some more. Uh, j maybe you could just put something like this. There is no reason to fear. Okay. There is no reason to fear. Okay? If God is on our side, there is no reason to fear. Okay? Now, let's look on the, at the top of the next page where it says, you know, page 16. Despite suffering and evil in the world and the flood of injustice in human history, we are summoned to believe that the ultimate principle of reality is love itself. Okay, so the, the ultimate principle, the foundation of everything, the foundation of meaning, the foundation of our life, the foundation of everything that has value, the principle of love. And what, uh, if you read the Gospel of, uh, if you read uh, the Gospel of John, God is love. So the principle of love is God himself. And so why should we fear why should we have a problem if God is love? And everything is based on love. So, despite the suffering, despite everything in the world, the wars, the struggling, the, the rapes, the murders, the, the holocaust, all of that, eventually, the basis of life is love. And so, if when we respond to love, then we can be bring we can be a salvation story, but when we're not responding to love, then we're self it's selfish, and then every single human being, every single human being, has that dynamic tension between love and selfishness. We're twenty in this room, let's say, every every.